Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, I'd like to continue our discussion, our exploration, our journey through this Criterion Collection set at spine number 1036. It is, of course, Bruce Lee, his greatest hits. Now, up to now on this YouTube channel, I have been uploading a number of videos wherein I have been discussing certain aspects of this particular set. Today, I'd like to focus our attention on disc two, the second of seven discs, Blu-ray discs in this set. And on such second disc is the film and please, I apologize in advance for my poor pronunciation. Uh, Jing Wu Man, or in English, Fist of Fury from 1972. And it also has a number of supplements, which I will try to discuss later on in this video. So Fist of Fury as a film, I think it can be safely said, is one of Bruce Lee's most dynamic martial arts films. It is often cited by many Bruce Lee's fans to be their very favorite of the Bruce Lee films from 1970s. And for good reason, because it is packed to the brim with utterly electrifying fight sequences that are, on the one hand, so exciting, so thrilling, and they build and build and build and evolve throughout the film thus showcasing a, a really dynamic, fluid style that makes the film uh, almost uh, uh, timeless in a way. But also, in that aspect, we also see in a cinematic martial arts display something akin to uh, the philosophy, if you will, of Bruce Lee. For those of you who know, Bruce Lee's philosophy was, uh, was embodied in Jeet Kune Do, and one of the things that he valued so much is the notion of adaptability and changing and being fluid in order to meet the skill set, if you will, of a particular opponent. In other words, styles differ depending on one's opponent, and one has to adapt if one wants to, uh, wants to win, wants to uh, overcome the obstacle. Well, in this film, I think we do see this sense of adaptability even within the fights themselves. And so uh, we see Bruce Lee's character try to adapt given certain circumstances depending on the opponent that he's facing and the particular martial arts style that such opponent espouses. But also, we also see Bruce Lee's character trying to adapt depending on the weaponry that the opponents use. And believe me, there are so many variants and variations of styles and weaponry used that makes for such an interesting combination of of fight scenes that really populate this film pretty much from the get-go all the way up to the end. And uh, this makes for really thrilling, entertaining cinema that is also, I think, emblematic of Bruce Lee, uh, the man and the philosopher. So uh, it's a really wonderful example of Bruce Lee's cinema in that respect. I think also we have a film that is very much a story that that is uh, 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 really much dependent on a sense of national pride. And we have uh, external enemies, if you will. And it's the story of, of uh, rival martial arts schools, but also there's a story of national pride. And I think this is also very important in the context of Bruce Lee's cinema, because Bruce Lee's persona throughout his films has always been that of the underdog, he has always been that of fighting for justice and trying to fight against injustice. And he's also seen as the defender, someone who defends against the enemies uh, in order to protect pride, in order to protect the innocent, in order to protect the, the weak, and also uh, in order to uh, protect himself. And I think we see this in many of his films. We saw it in The Big Boss. We'll see it again in Way of the Dragon. But we see it here highlighted uh, quite strongly in Fist of Fury. 
and thus it makes this film I think quite uh, illuminating again as a furtherance of the Bruce Lee on-screen persona as a fighter as a defender and as a hero in that aspect again uh, in the context of this story which is very much dependent on a sense of national pride and that makes it I think a very interesting film as well and also we do see furtherances of this idea of Bruce Lee and his evolving style and how we see uh, comparisons and contrasts between the way that uh, Raymond Chow and Golden Harvest and Low Ray and uh, the fight choreography that is without Bruce Lee uh, evolves in the film versus the way in which Bruce Lee's fights evolve in the film. So just like in the earlier film, The Big Boss, we do see uh, comparison and contrast between uh, uh, one way of, of making films and another way of making films, Bruce Lee's way of making films films as it were. And so even within the fight choreography there might be an ebb and flow between one way and the other but still we see I think uh, even more so than the big boss yet a furtherance of Bruce Lee's cinema and him really uh, putting his mark uh, really stamping his his uh, legacy forward uh, with uh, such force and charisma in this film Fist of Fury. I mean it's quite quite uh, startling to see uh, this uh, evolution of his uh, cinematic fighting style uh, on display uh, throughout this film and it's really wonderful uh, for that. And also we should note that this film is also providing a showcase for Bruce Lee's other talents uh, because we see him in other types of costume, in other types of of uh, of, of uh, performances, uh, sometimes uh, tending towards the comic, other times tending towards the romantic. In fact, I think of all the films in this set, this film, uh, Fist of Fury, contains a romance element that is very strong and I think very tender and played very nicely. Uh, that between the character played by Bruce Lee and his co-star Nora Mao. And so uh, we have uh, this aspect of Bruce Lee's on-screen persona uh, that we haven't seen so far. And this therefore makes this film, Fist of Fury, I think, a real highlight showcasing not just Bruce Lee's fighting talents on screen, but also his acting talents as well. Uh, uh, someone in disguise and also uh, seeing him mourning and also seeing him uh, really struggle as well as seeing him in a kind of romance if you will. Uh, so I find this film therefore to being a showcase of uh, the multi-faceted talent of Bruce Lee the actor and the performer and the martial artist and thus Fist of Fury from 1972 is a key film one of the best films uh, of Bruce Lee's cinema indeed Fist of Fury from 1972 direct directed by Lo Wei now when it comes to the Criterion Collection release of this film Fist of Fury together in this set, I must say that this is w one place in particular where this set shines quite brilliantly. It is a splendid set overall, don't get me wrong, but in particular, I think Fist of Fury, the second disc, is a particular highlight. Now, it is based off of a 4K restoration, uh, Fortune Star, and it is very similar to that which we saw from Shout Factory on this Blu-ray. And based on my own eyesight, which I admit is not necessarily the best indicator of these things, these look very similar, very comparable, maybe the same in some places. Uh, and so I think you can do no wrong uh, by going with either this or the cr new criterion uh, with respect to Fist of Fury. So uh, there is that. Now, the Fist of Fury release on Criterion, uh, we should say, has uh, the has three um, audio tracks. And so this is very important to keep in mind. So the audio tracks are the original Mandarin, and then we have the original English dub, and then we have uh, Cantonese. And I'm sorry, the original Mandarin track is mono track, monaural track, and then we have the original English dub, also mono, and then Cantonese uh, mono track. 
And this is uh, very important to keep in mind because uh, the Shout factory release Blu-ray, which I have here, also had, in addition to all of those audio tracks, it also had the Mandarin language DTS 5.1 track, and then it has uh, Cantonese DTS 5.1 track, and then the English language DTS 5.1 track. So in addition to those mono tracks, the Shout release also had 5.1 tracks. And so we're not getting those 5.1 tracks uh, with this film on the Criterion set. And again, just like with my discussion of the Big Boss, will this matter in the long run? It could for some, but when with the Criterion release, you are getting what I would consider to be the essentials, um, uh, which is, I think, really, really good. Although I must admit that, for instance, when you have the film on the English DTS 5.1 track, you do get that extra added bonus of listening to the Fist of Fury song, uh, the beginning and the end there. And so you don't necessarily have that option when you have the Criterion set. And so uh, that's something to, to keep in mind, I think, for enthusiasts. But for anyone who is interested, uh, those uh, monaural tracks that are available on the Criterion release, the Mandarin language, the English language, and the Cantonese language, I think are all very serviceable and, and really uh, do the film justice very nicely. So that is just one difference that we should keep in mind with respect to the Criterion release and earlier releases of this film. And speaking of that, we also have the commentary track by Mike Leader. And this is the commentary track which we also saw on past Shout Factory releases. Uh, so it's the same uh, commentary track as we see before. And just like with the Big Boss Mike Leader commentary track, it is great. It is filled with a lot of great information. However, there might be some issue in terms of audio quality. And so there might be some moments where it's a little bit difficult to hear exactly what he's saying. But it's not his fault. It's just a recording quality issue. Uh, but if you're okay with that, then I think it's a very fine commentary track. Of course, there have been many other commentary tracks made about this film that aren't included with the Criterion release. Uh, once again, I have to mention Bay Logan's very famous commentary tracks for the Bruce Lee films, and those aren't included in the Criterion set. Also, I should point out that the Criterion set does not have any new cri uh, commentary track for uh, Fist of Fury, so that's something to keep in mind. But we do, once again, have the Mike Leader audio commentary track, which was taken, once again, from the Shout release. And then we have included in the Criterion release, a 10-minute, approximately, interview with Matthew Pauly, a Bruce Lee expert. And just like with his other interviews in this set, he speaks about Fist of Fury and about the details leading up to the film, certain aspects of the film's narrative and story and uh, context. Uh, for instance, the Ho Yuan Jia legend or uh, issues involving Bruce Lee and his attitudes towards certain aspects of the film. Uh, and aspects of the, the characterizations of Japanese characters in the film and things of that nature. And I think it's a very fine interview to have. I think the Matthew Pauly interviews included in this Criterion set are one of the great strengths of this set, in fact. And so it's nice to have. And then we have a, an alternate opening credits section with the Criterion release. And this has two alternate opening credits credits. One is uh, a credits which has the title of Chinese Connection in place of the title Fist of Fury. And then the other is the Japanese version, title sequence, uh, version of the film, which is called in Japanese Ikari no Tekken. And it, it has a, a kind of a different layout of title sequence. And so that's really nice. Incidentally, I should uh, remark that the earlier Shout release that I have here had the Chinese Connection version opening titles as alternative sequence, but I don't think it included the Japanese title sequence. I don't think so anyway. So it's nice to have the Criterion set, which includes that Japanese title sequence. Uh, really nice indeed. And then the Criterion set uh, includes an interview with uh, Yuen Hua, uh, who it's about 10 minutes, and this is uh, someone who's very, uh, very much 
uh, closely linked to Bruce Lee in terms of his stunt work and his close relationship uh, with Bruce Lee in very key moments of his films like Enter the Dragon and also Fist of Fury and so it's nice to have his interview here which is also taken by the way from earlier releases I should add and then there is a section uh, for uh, trailers on this release. You should say also uh, something that's very interesting the Criterion release also includes with the Fist of Fury disc, the second disc, a number of interviews uh, which are uh, described as being from 1993, uh, Star TV 1993. And so these are interviews with Nora Mao, Nora Mao, which is First Lady, and the next is Riki Hashimoto, which is called Blade of Fury, and then uh, next is with Jun uh, Katsumura which is called Master of Bushido. And the, uh, the Nora Mao interview is 17 minutes, and the Riki Hashimoto interview is about 12 minutes, and the Jun Katsumura interview is also 10 minutes. I should say that the Hashimoto interview and the Katsumura interview are also conducted in Japanese, and they're all uh, subtitled, uh, which is, uh, these are really, really brilliant. Uh, Nora Mao's uh, uh, importance in this film and in Bruce Lee's cinema overall Ken is just uh, one of those great aspects of this film uh, because her performances are really great from her uh, relatively small role in The Big Boss and then continuing through Fist of Fury and then on her way to uh, her role in uh, a later film which we will discuss later which is Way of the Dragon of course. So this interview is really essential, and it's, I'm so glad it's included here. And then the Hashimoto, the Riki Hashimoto interview is, is also really fantastic and awesome. And we get to hear a little bit about his background, how he was a professional baseball player, and how he then, uh, how he ended up being in this, uh, in this Hong Kong film uh, starring Bruce Lee and uh, that sort of thing so that's also an excellent one and then last but certainly not least is the interview with uh, Jun Katsumura uh, which uh, uh, this is also such a great interview I love how in particular he sometimes refers to Bruce Lee as uh, Lee Shodong uh, and so that is a sort of sign of respect, I think, that he is showing. And he is really just uh, uh, giving so many great comments about his, uh, his working on the film, uh, anecdotes uh, regarding him and the real uh, friendliness and professionalism of Bruce Lee. And also, uh, Katsumura also makes some interesting comments about uh, the aspect of the Japanese or the depiction of Japanese characters in this film and his insights I think are really quite uh, quite interesting with respect to this particular uh, aspect of the film. Um, I should point out the, that this film uh, Fist of Fury and Bruce Lee's films in general are really popular in Japan really really popular and so uh, but uh, you know with that it's really nice to hear his perspective on, on uh, some aspects of, of uh, certain depictions in this film and I think it's uh, it, for that reason alone I think the interview is, is well worth listening to but it's it's well worth listening to for a whole list of reasons as well so uh, you check it out if you can uh, and uh, so this is rounding out the Criterion release um, I should point out that uh, as I say it doesn't include absolutely everything that has ever been made uh, as supplements or as commentary tracks uh, in past non-criterion releases. And so I should say, for instance, uh, that the earlier Shout release had a supplement called Remembering Fist of Fury, uh, interviews with Jason Tobin and Isaac F uh, Florentine, which isn't included on the second disc. And also there is a stills gallery here, which I don't see included on the second disc as well. Uh, but I think even with that, and I also mentioned the, the topic about uh, uh, the commentary tracks as well, uh, but even with that, my friends, I think we are still getting 
a release that uh, in many aspects, as I tried to explain earlier, you know, I'm not, I admit that I, I, I'm not the biggest ultimate expert or collector when it comes to Bruce Lee films on physical media. And so I don't have absolutely everything. And I, so I don't necessarily know where everything comes in. And I haven't necessarily seen everything, although I've done my very best throughout my life to try to watch and listen to as many things as possible. Uh, so with that limited background, still, I admit to being uh, very pleasantly surprised and happy, for instance, as to the inclusion of those three interviews that I referred to earlier. And uh, I also uh, am very f uh, much a fan of the Matthew Polly interviews that were made exclusively by Criterion, as well as some other aspects of this. And so for those reasons, plus more, I think this is yet another shining gem or a real um, a wonderful part of this already wonderful set from Criterion. Uh, once again, uh, Criterion, I think, has done an, a fine job, and it's a really excellent presentation of what I think is really one of Bruce Lee's best films from this period. This is 1972's Fist of Fury. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. Please continue to be well, stay safe, take very good care of yourselves, and cheers.